Good morning everyone. My name is Vijay Gupta and you are watching Biology Classes. So welcome to all of you in this lecture of Biology. Students, in this lecture we will talk about your chapter number 3 that is Human Reproduction. This video is especially related to my 12 students, also for, for my NEET students and for my BSc students. In this lecture we will talk about the structure of testis, the detailed structure of testis, the morphology, the anatomy, the histology, different kinds of cells and the functions of testis. In this lecture, we will describe in detail the LS of testis and also the detailed structure of a seminiferous tubule in which a sperm formation takes place. So, let us start the video. First of all, it is very important to understand what the testis are. Testis are the male, uh, testis are the main reproductive organs of the male. As you can see, there are two testis found in the male which are present inside the testis sac or the scrotum so these are the testis this spelling is singular that is t-e-s-t-i-s while t-e-s-t-e-s is the plural one so these are the testis and these testis are present inside a testis sac testis sac is also known as scrotum so testis are present outside of the abdominal cavity both the testis are situated inside a sac like a structure which is called testis sac or the scrotum. Now we will talk about the outer structure or the morphology of the testis. Each testis is about 4 to 5 centimeter in length. So each testis is about 4 to 5 centimeter in length. It is oval shaped and it is 2 to 3 centimeter in diameter. So the length is 4 to 5 centimeter while the it is about 2 to 5 centimeter sorry 2 to 3 centimeter broad if we talk about the weight of testis then each testis is about 14 to 15 gram and the color of the testis is pinkish white so it was the morphology of the testis now we will talk about the detailed structure of testis one more thing i would like to tell you at the apex of each testis epididymis is present and from the epididymis a tube arises that is called vas deferens so each testis consists of epididymis at its apex and from the epididymis a tube arises from the arises which is known as vas deferens inside the testis a sperm formation takes place sperms are produced inside the testis and the phenomena is known as spermatogenesis so spermatogenesis takes place inside the testis and these sperms collect in the epididymis after maturation the mature sperms are present inside the epididymis and from the epididymis these sperms carries towards the seminal vesicle inside the abdominal cavity so this is the testis this uh, this is the epididymis and this is the vas deferens in this diagram we will talk about detail all the three structures the testis the epididymis and the vas deferens so this is the testis I can, as you can see this is the epididymis and this tube is called as the vas deferens so now we will discuss about this diagram so it is the ls of testis yeah, or means longitudinal section of testis as you can see as you can see the outermost layer this is the testis layer and this is the outermost layer this red colored layer is known as tunica vaginalis so the outermost layer of testis is known as tunica vaginalis now below this layer this orange colored layer is also present which is called the tunica albigenia and the last or the lowermost layer which i made with dark green color that is tunica vasculosa so there are total three layers present around the testis the outermost is the tunica vaginalis the middle one is known as tunica albigenia while the innermost is known as tunica vasculosa which consists of blood vessels etc now inside these three layers the innermost layer tunica vasculis, uh, vasculosa forms some septa and these septa are known as septula testis and these septa produce about 250 to 300 chambers inside the testis which are known as testicular lobules so these are the testicular lobules uh, i made one two three four five six seven but these are about 250 it is not po not possible to make 250 chambers in this diagram so i made only six to seven but 
you know the uh, reality that there are total 250 to 300 testicular lobules or the chambers are present inside the testis now these testicular lobules consist of a coiled a much coiled tubule which is called seminiferous tubule and inside the seminiferous tubule sperm formation or spermatogenesis takes place so it is the main uh, part of the testis that is the seminiferous tubule so each testicular lobule or each chamber of the testis in 250 chambers each testis each chamber consists of two to three seminiferous tubule in a very coiled condition so as you can see in this chamber there are two seminiferous tubule while in this chamber there are three seminiferous tubule so two to three seminiferous tubules are present in each chamber so 250 chambers and each chamber consists of two to three seminiferous tubule in coiled condition when these seminiferous tubule emerge out from the testicular lobules they becomes straight and these straight tubes are called as straight tubules there is not any specific name is given these are simply called as straight tubules and after that all the straight tubules of all 250 chambers mix together and to form a dense network and this dense network of seminiferous tubule is termed as the rate testis another important question asked in the neat examination especially so this area is called as rate testis in which seminiferous tubule mix together and to form a network a dense network of seminiferous tubule is termed as the rate testis now these rate testis after this the seminiferous tubule emerge out from the testis and enters into the epididymis at this time they becomes straight tubes and this these straight tubes are known as vossa efferentia so these are the vossa efferentia and finally these uh, this seminiferous tubule enters into the epididymis now the epididymis consists of mature sperms and the epididymis is consist of is divided into three parts the upper part or the head region of the epididymis is termed as the caput epididymis while the middle region of the epididymis is termed as the corpus epididymis while the lowermost region of the epididymis is known as the cauda epididymis and one most important question is was difference arises from the cauda epididymis uh, it was asked in the in the examination that from which part of epididymis was difference arises so as you can see in this diagram there are three parts of epididymis the upper part caput epididymis the middle one is the corpus epididymis while the lower one is the cauda epididymis and the was difference arises from the cauda epididymis this was difference carries the mature sperm into the seminal vesicle inside the abdominal cavity we'll discuss about the later so this was it was all about the ls of testis let's revise the name once because these names are very important for your examination so the outermost layer of testis is known as tunica vaginalis the second layer is known as tunica albiginia while the innermost layer or the third layer is known as tunica vasculosa this tunica vasculosa produce many septa which are known as septula testis and there are these septa produce about 250 chambers inside the testis and these chambers are known as the testicular lobules inside the testicular lobules seminiferous tubule is present in a coiled condition and each testicular lobule consists of two to three seminiferous tubule these seminiferous tubules emerge out from the testicular lobules and becomes a straight known as a straight tubules and when these all straight tubules fuse together and to form a network that is called a rate testis and from the rate testis the, the tubules become straight and enters into the epididymis at this time these straight tubules are known as vossa efferentia and finally vossa efferentia opens into the epididymis and from epididymis vos difference arises which carries the mature sperm into the seminal vesicle of the body so it was all about the morphology and anatomy of the testis now we will talk about the histology means the detailed structure of the seminiferous tubule as you can see one more thing this is this area uh, between the seminiferous tubules there is a vacant place or the hollow space that is, this is called interstitial space so as we uh, cut the seminiferous tubule in section then this type of diagram can be seen under microscope so these are the seminiferous tubules in section and while this yellow colored area is the space which is present between the seminiferous tubule so this space is called an interstitial space and this is very important so this is the seminiferous tubule this is the seminiferous tubule and this is the seminiferous tubule in the section so it is the ts of seminiferous tubule now we'll talk about the 
TS of seminiferous tubule, the internal structure of seminiferous tubule. The outer margins of the seminiferous tubule, the outermost layer of the seminiferous tubule is termed as tunica propria. Tunica propria is the outermost layer or the circular margins of the seminiferous tubule. Another fibrous layer surrounds the tunica propria which is called the fibrous sheath. As you can see, I made with red lines, red dotted lines, these are the fibrous sheath which surrounds each seminiferous tubule as you can see here. So this is the fibrous sheath which surrounds the tunica propria or the outermost layer of the uh, seminiferous tubule. Now inside the seminiferous tubule, inside the seminiferous tubule, the outermost area consists of germinal epithelium. The outermost area consists of germinal epithelium and the germinal epithelium consists of germ cells and these germ cells are termed as spermatogonia. It is plural word, spermatogonium is the singular one. So these cells which are present at the outer margins of the seminiferous tubule is termed as spermatogonia. So this is the spermatogonia and now this is the germinal cell, germinal epithelium. These spermatogonia produce another type of cell which are, which are called spermatocyte. So first layer is known as spermatogonia. Below the spermatogonia, spermatocytes are present and spermatocytes are of two types, primary spermatocytes and secondary spermatocytes. These spermatocytes produce spermatids, another cell and this spermatids present spermatozoa. So it is a proper sequence which takes place during the process of spermatogenesis. So you can see the process of spermatogenesis also inside the TS, uh, TS of seminiferous tubule. So the outermost layer is known as spermatogonia. The spermatogonia give rise spermatocytes. The spermatocytes may be primary spermatocyte and then secondary spermatocyte. And these spermatocytes give rise to another cell which is called spermatid. And these spermatid give rise another cells which are known as spermatozoa and these spermatozoa converted into sperm. So it is a proper sequence of spermatogenesis. So during spermatogenesis at the margins of seminiferous tubule spermatogonia are present and these spermatogonia converted into spermatocyte, spermatocyte converted into spermatids, spermatid converted into spermatozoa and spermatozoa finally converted into sperms. So this is a proper sequence which I made with different colors like brown color spermatogonia, purple color spermatocyte and orange colored spermatids and dark black colored spermatozoa or the sperms. Now one important thing at the margins of seminiferous tubule some large cells are also present as you can see these are light red colored cells. These cells are termed as Sertoli cells. These cells are termed as Sertoli cells another very important name. These spermatozoa insert its head into the Sertoli cell and absorb nutrition. So the Sertoli cells provide nutrition to the developing spermatozoa. So these are the spermatozoa or the sperms which are attached with the Sertoli cells and absorbing the nutrition. So the Sertoli cells provide nutrition to the developing spermatozoa. This is a very important question of your exam. Okay, what is the function of Sertoli cells? So the function of Sertoli cell is to provide nutrition to the developing spermatozoa or the sperms. So these are the Sertoli cells. Now it was all about the seminiferous tubules. Now we will talk about the space which is present between the seminiferous tubule. The space is known as interstitial space and this space consists of different kinds of cells. First of all a tissue which is known as connective tissue these orange colored lines, faint lines are called as connective tissues. The blood vessels, obviously blood supply is very necessary for all the body organs. So these are the blood vessels which enters, which are present between the space. Now some important cells are found in groups. As you can see these groups of the cells, this is called interstitial cells or the Leydig cells. Another very important question for you. Leydig cells or the interstitial cells which are present between the space of the seminiferous tubule. So these Leydig cells or interstitial cells produce the main male hormone that is called 
testosterone in the body of male different kinds of characters can be seen which are different to the female so these characters are known as secondary sexual character suppose the genital build up which is more developed than the female the hair growth beard mustaches on the face body hairs broad shoulders so these characters are known as secondary sexual characters and these characters are present just because of the presence of testosterone so this hormone testosterone is an important male hormone secreted from the leydig cell or the interstitial cells and it is responsible for the secondary sexual characters in male so this is all about the space which is present between the seminiferous tubule so i told you uh, about the ts of seminiferous tubule the detailed structure of a seminiferous tubule so it was all about ls of testis the structure of testis morphology anatomy histology of testis and a detailed structure of seminiferous tubule i think the topic is very clear to you still if you have any question any query any suggestion you can ask in the comment section thanks for watching have a good day